Well, good morning and happy new year. January 1st, 2024. We're into a new year, 2024. And I hope everyone had a great uh, New Year's Eve. We're safe and enjoyed time with friends. I'm bringing in the new year. And I hope you're ready for this new reading plan. This morning, we are going to begin in the reading plan by Robert Murray McShane, Scottish uh, preacher and evangelist in the 1800s, died at a very early age of 29 from typhus, uh, typhoid, and uh, is still having a great impact on the world today through his ministry in developing this one-year Bible reading plan. Uh, this plan will consist of uh, reading from the, the Old Testament, uh, the New Testament, uh, and another reading from the Old Testament, and uh, the Psalms or Acts uh, or the Gospels. Uh, what it will allow is for the reading for the year, we'll read through the Old Testament once and the New Testament twice and the Psalms twice. So that's going to be our reading plan for this coming year. And I hope you're ready to dive into it with me this morning. So let's get into the reading of God's word in this new year. Genesis chapter one. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was formless and void and darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. And God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning one day. Then God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters and let it separate the water from the waters. So God made the expanse and separate, separated the waters which were below the expanse from the waters which were above the expanse. And it was so. And God called the expanse heaven. And there was evening and there was morning, a second day. Then God said, let the waters below the heavens be gathered into one place and let the dry land appear. And so, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth. And the gathering of the waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth sprout vegetation, plant yielding seed and fruit trees on the earth, bearing fruit after their kind with seed in them. And it was so. And the earth brought forth vegetation, plant yielding seed after their kind and trees bearing fruit with, with seed in them after their kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning. A third day. Then God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so. So God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and also the stars. And God placed them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth and to and to rule the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, a fourth day. Then God said, Let the water swarm with swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth, across the face of the expanse of the heavens. And God created the great sea monsters, and every living creature that moves, with which the water swarmed after their kind, and every winged bird after its kind. And, and God saw that it was good. Then God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, a fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures after their kind, cattle and creeping things and beasts of the earth after their kind. And it was so. God made the beasts of the earth after their kind and the cattle after their kind and every creeping thing of the ground after its kind, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image, 
according to our likeness so that they will have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over every living thing that creeps on the earth. Then God said, behold, I have given to you every plant yielding seed that is on the surface of all the earth and every tree, which has a fruit of the tree yielding seed. It, it shall be food for you and to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the sky and to everything that creeps on the earth, which has life. I have given every green plant for food and it was so. And God saw that he and God saw all that he made and behold, it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. Now to Matthew chapter one. The, the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of, of Isaac, and Isaac was the father of Jacob, and Jacob was the father of Judah and his brothers, and Judah was the father of Perez and Zerah by Tamar. And Perez was the father of Hezron, and Hezron was the father of Ram, and Ram was the father of Amenadab, and Amenadab was the father of Nashon, and Nashon was the father of Salmon. And Salmon was the father of Boaz by Rahab. And Boaz was the father of Obed by Ruth. And Obed was the father of Jesse. And Jesse was the father of David the king. And David was the father of Solomon by the wife of Uriah. And Solomon was the father of Rehoboam. And Rehoboam was the father of Abijah. And Abijah was the father of Asa. And Asa was the father of Jehoshaphat. And Jehoshaphat was the father of Joram. And Joram was the father of Uzziah. And Uzziah was the father of Jotham. And Jotham was the father of Ahaz. And Ahaz was the father of Hezekiah. And Hezekiah was the father of Manasseh. And Manasseh was the father of Ammon. And Ammon was the father of Josiah. And Josiah was the father of Jeconiah and his brothers at the time of the, de of the deportation to Babylon. And after the deportation to Babylon, Jeconiah was the father of Shiltil, and Shiltil was the father of Zerubbabel, and Zerubbabel was the father of Abihu, and Abihu was the father of Eliakim, and Eliakim was the father of Azor, and Azor, Azor was the father of Zadok, and Zadok was the father of Achim, and Achim was the father of Iliad, and Iliad, Iliad was the father of Eleazar. And Eleazar was the father of Mathen, and Mathen was the father of Jacob. And Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, by whom Jesus was born, who is called Christ. Therefore, all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. Excuse me. Therefore, therefore, all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations, and from David to the deportation to Babylon, 14 generations, and from the deportation to Babylon to the Christ, 14 generations. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother, Mary, had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be a child by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her, planned to send her away secretly. But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the one who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will, for he will save his people from their sins. Now, all this took place in order that what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet would be fulfilled, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, 
which translated means God with us. And Joseph got up from his sleep and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took Mary as his wife, but kept her a virgin until she gave birth to a son and he called his name Jesus. Now to Ezra chapter one. Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to complete the word of Yahweh from the mouth of Jeremiah, Yahweh stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, so that he had a proclamation passed throughout all his kingdom and also put it in, put it in writing, saying, Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, Yahweh, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has appointed me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever there is among you of all his people, may his God be with him. Let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and rebuild the house of Yahweh, the God of Israel. He is the God who is in Jerusalem. So everyone who remains at whatever place he may sojourn, let the men of that place support him with silver and gold, with goods and cattle, together with a freewill offering for the house of God, which is in Jerusalem. Then the heads of fathers' households of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and the Levites arose, that, that is, of everyone whose spirit God had stirred up, stirred to go up to, to rebuild the house of Yahweh, which is in Jerusalem. All those around them strengthened them with articles of silver, with gold, with possessions, with cattle, and with precious things, aside from all that was given as a freewill offering. Also, King Cyrus brought out the articles of the house of Yahweh, which Nebuchadnezzar had brought out from Jerusalem and put in the house of his gods. And Cyrus, king of Persia, had them brought out by the hand of Mithridath, the treasurer. And he counted them out to Sheshbazar, the prince of Judah. Now this was, an, was their number, 30 gold dishes, a thousand silver dishes, 29 duplicates, 30 gold bowls, 410 silver bowls of a second kind, and a thousand other articles. All the articles of gold and silver numbered 5,400. Shishbazar brought them all up with the exiles who went up from Babylon to Jerusalem. I was looking to see what it meant by duplicates. It's a, a obscure Hebrew word that other possible meanings are knives and censers. So in case you were wondering now to Acts chapter one. Plus I composed about, about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up to heaven after he he had, by the Holy Spirit, given orders to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over 40 days and speaking about the things concerning the kingdom of God. And gathering them together, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which, he said, you heard of from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they were asking him, saying, Lord, is it at this time you are restoring the kingdom of heaven? But he said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the end of the earth. And after he had said these things, he was lifted up while they were looking on, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And as they were gazing intently into the sky while he, while he was going, behold, two men in white clothing stood beside them. They, they also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in just the same way as you have watched him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, 
which is, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. And when they had entered the city, they went up to the upper room where they, where, where they were staying. That is Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus and Simon, the zealot and Judas, the son of James. These all with one accord were continually devoting themselves to prayer along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus and his brothers. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the brothers. A crowd of about 120 persons was there together and said, men, brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit foretold by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was counted among us and received his share in this ministry. Now this man acquired a field with the price of his unrighteousness. And falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his intestines gushed out. And it became known to all who were living in Jerusalem, so that in their own language that field was called Hakodama, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his residence be made desolate and let no one dwell in it and let another man take his office. Therefore, it is necessary that the men who have accompanied us accompanied us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning with the baptism of John until the day that he was taken up from us. One of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. And they put forward two men, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also called Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, Lord, who knows the hearts of all men, show which one of these two you have chosen to take the place of this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell to Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. And that will conclude day one in our reading from this plan by Robert Murray McShane. I hope you've enjoyed it this morning. It's going to be an interesting read throughout the year, and I hope you're prepared to join me for 364 more days of reading God's Word. Love doing it, and I'm glad you're joining me and coming along for the ride. Hope you have a blessed day today on this New Year's Day, January 1st, 2024. Time is slipping away. Are you redeeming that time? For Christ will return one day. Will you be found faithful? Hope you have a blessed day today. Soli Deo Gloria.